end of life things, you know, it, it we just transition. It's like this is the old vehicle. It's getting worn out, and we we leave. We review our life, what we've done, how we've impacted people, um, and then we get to choose another new scenario of things we want to experience or work on, um, get a better understanding of, and then we uh, pick a new family and a new form, whether it's in this dimension or a different dimension, and we continue forward, okay? Um, so, yeah, all, all interesting things. Now, it was interesting yesterday that I had somebody ask about chakras, etc., and that, that path forward. And again, if you're going through the Kundalini journey, um, you might want to read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, and that will tell you things that you are going to face in that journey. When I saw the Tibetan Book of the Red, and I, I started reading, I was like, oh my God, this is the journey. <laughs> You know, now usually the Tibetan Book of the Dead, they'll read when when uh, one has passed and they read that of the realms, you know, the hungry ghost and all these other things. Well, if you read it and you're going through Kundalini, you do that journey while you're here, okay? You can process and go through those things. These are different... Um, yeah, different mentations that one can um, pass through. These illusory things of, uh, you know, so the, the minute I read the Tibetan Book of the Dead, I was like, hello. <laughs> this is so the Kundalini journey, okay? Going through those, those different... Um, mentations and stuff uh, along the way that one confronts on their journey. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. And if you understand that the journey is not as much about body form as it is consciousness and the different things that we're facing, now, some of the difficulties when people are really attached to the form and they make it about the form. The form is like the computer. Consciousness programs the computer, okay? The computer does not program consciousness. We had scientists that had it backwards. The brain creates consciousness. No, consciousness... <laughs> Consciousness programs the brain, okay? Because if people have a stroke or something, they can, through consciousness, make changes to the brain, okay? So it, they've got it backwards. But anyway, that's another whole kettle of fish. <laughs> yeah, the journey and the journey through... Kundalini is to show you you're not this physical form. You are spirit. You are, you know, something much more than this. But this is our, like our vehicle. This is the house, the temple, and the vehicle for our ability to be able to express in this world of transient, okay? In this world of duality and the transients, okay? So there's something much more than, than um, just this transient world. And it's like I was trying to explain in the other video, you go into the Hindu temples and you have the linga. The linga is the stone. You see the stone like that. It's an oval and it sits in this yoni. Yoni is, is like the um, expression where... The linga is like the zero point balance. People want to say the linga is like a penis. It's not. If it, if you wanted to do it to a body part, it would be like a testicle, okay? <laughs> because it's the seed state of what's going to come forward. You have the seed state, and it comes out into the light, the light beyond light. 
comes out into the transient, okay, which it becomes like a prism and breaks up this light into the manifestation, okay? When one gets to realization, they're like the linga, which is the still center, and then th everything revolves around that. Rather than trying to hang on to the outside and go inward, you're already inward and you've become the axle or you've become the linga. And everything is revolving around that, but there's always that still center. There's always that. Um, so that's why they have the things like the, uh, like Shakti, you have the, um, oh, or, or the Buddhist, you have the Kala Chakra, okay? The different entrances that go into the center, okay? All of these points where all the energies connect, etc. okay? So there's so many things that one can explore when it comes to consciousness, energy, Everything is based, you know, the energetic things, depending on the vibration of something, creates the colors. And the way I like to explain it is that um, the divine is, is the light bulb. The transient is the light shade, okay? <clears throat> you poke holes in the light shade and what happens? You see various lights coming out, but they all come from what? The one singular source. If you trace it back, it's all singular one source. But because of the transient, you see many lights, you think that they're all separate, but they're not separate, okay? That's the easiest way I have to explain it. Everyone has the same amount of the divine is within them. The only difference between realized and non unrealized, because we all have exactly the same potential, <clears throat> the same workings, is one is confused by the lampshade, okay? They let, take the lampshade and these various pinpoints to be separate identities. But the path, when one gets back to their original, you can call it original mind, which is prior to the, the, um, the uh, uh, how do I want to say it? <clears throat> the word and all of these things in creation, okay? That's ultimately what we are, okay? This is why you say uh, that, that you can never speak about it because all words are what? Duality. And Advaita is prior to duality. The minute you speak about it, it's already in divisionary realm. <laughs> the journey is, you know, you get to the end point of it where everything dismantles and it's like the great joke. It's what it is. You get, you get there and everything dismantles Everything you thought you knew is blown out immediately, okay? And you just laugh because <laughs> you, you think you're separate and you run here and you run there and try to find out, oh, I've got to find God, I've got to find this, I've got to go here, I've got to go there. You find out you couldn't have gotten away from it if you tried because it is inherently life. <laughs> So it's like the great joke. You know, once you get the joke, then it's like, oh my goodness. And when you start the journey, maybe you're in pain, and that's what starts you on the journey. So actually those things are open doors to explore, to get one to explore. That's why I say they're left-handed blessings. I look back on my life, and I had no support from family or anything like that, caused me to go within. It started my journey. So it was a left-handed blessing in the end. If I would have had a lot of external support, maybe I would have never been willing to do the journey. 
but you just want to get out of pain. You'll do anything to get out of pain. I wanted to get out of this world. I want nothing to do with it. I was in pain all the time, depression and flashbacks and, you know, drama. And that opened the door to the exploration. And then when one gets to moksha or liberation and you become a liberated being, you saw the only thing you need to be liberated from was the mental spin of the scenarios that one creates around the poor me saga. <laughs> the pity party band, which we, we can be the great drum major of the pity party band for quite some time. <laughs> But then again, when everything dismantles <laughs> and you see the joke of the universe, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> again, then you find out, you go back into life again. You start here, you do the cycle, you wind up back here again, but you're on a different level, a different um, layer of understanding, of knowledge, okay? So... Yeah, it's revealed. And it's so simple in the end. But we are so consumed with um, externalized happenings of wanting to try to... Most people live in fear, lack, fear, if only, um, all of that stuff. Okay? And it really, the biggest part of the journey is sitting and reflecting and watching what happens. You watch the mind stuff as it's coming in, how it affects the physicality, how it affects the emotions, how, how it creates another storyline. And you follow that storyline back and then really look at it, okay? If you're coming out of a lot of uh, trauma, mental trauma that you've had put on you from whether childhood, whether it's parents or uh, other people, if you follow it back, you look and you see that it really had nothing to do with you. It had to do with somebody else's failings and things that they did not handle in their life. That's why the Bible says the sins of the father are perpetrated on the son. Okay, you're raised with their, their, um, uh, their illusion, their delusion, the things that they have not handled in their own life, and you become the target for that. You become that, that, you know. So once you see that, oh, this is coming from their mental illness, from their things they have not had, had nothing to do with me, okay? <laughs> Absolutely not. And then at that point, you can let go of it. Give it back to them. Here, you want that saga? You can have it. It's all yours, but I don't need to take it on anymore. I don't need to carry that burden, okay? It has nothing to do with me. So that's, again, part of the journey is to sit with it. But so many people don't want to sit with it and look at it. They want to run away from it, well, whether you're doing drink or drugs or partying or, you know, or whatever it is um, to try to numb that pain because don't want to look at that pain. I want to hide it. I want to cover it over. I want to, but that doesn't solve anything because it's always in the background pushing one, okay? So one has to be willing and come to the point of, stopping and seeing that these are open doors, but are we willing to walk through them? Okay, that's the labyrinth of the path. We have to go through the maze and the labyrinth, and in, in every labyrinth you have places to go through, and then you have points of, of where it, it's not going anywhere, okay? <laughs> so yeah, it's the, the journey. Okay, we have the journey of life. And just what is it you're here to explore, to learn, to celebrate, to rail against, 
okay? This is like the girl that came in and she was, and I'm trying to help her, you know, because she comes in and says, uh, I'm enlightened and I'm all potent. Oh, really? Well, tell me about that then. <laughs> Then she just gets angry, <laughs> says I'm a racist and she's browner than anybody and she's, you know, <laughs> goes off on this rant. <laughs> so we go, you know, stop. What is pushing your button? Okay, if you come and you make this proclamation, I ask you about it and then you get off on this thing. So you want to convince yourself that you're potent, you're powerful, you're this, you're that then stop and look, what is your button getting pushed about, okay? What is this big chip on the shoulder of this, you know? If you were all potent and this and that, and you didn't have a chip on your shoulder about everything, you wouldn't have this reactionary drama. So stop and look at it. These are all, you know, again, if you have a flashpoint, what happens? If you're in fear or you're in anger, what happens? It's like I told her, your hackles are raised. Oh, now you're calling me an animal. No, I'm not calling you an animal. <laughs> it's, it's a term. It means that, you know, your body is reacting. The hackles raise, the body reacts. You have this rush of adrenaline, fight or flight. So if you have fight or flight and this rush of adrenaline happen, stop, take a breath, and look at how it's affecting the mind and the body. It immediately goes to creating another storyline, okay? So most people are running their lives around fear or lack, okay? So what is it one is really lacking? Look at it. What is the fear about? Look at it, stop. And look how this fear, feeling of fear and lack creates another storyline, which you wrap around the physical form and emotion, etc. And see how these cause these changes in the body. You'll see that it comes down to a rush of adrenaline, okay? Which then attaches to a storyline. So back that up, back that up, look at it, watch how that happens, and then you can dissect it. You get into witness state, witness state, which they will call some part of depersonalization, which they want to make it something really toxic. Well, no, it's a valuable point on the path where one can watch their actions and comment on it as it's happening. There's a buffer zone, okay? The buffer zone allows you to witness what you are doing and comment on it as it's happening. Now, in my own journey, I can tell you in witness state, somebody said something and I went off and went ballistic and was just <laughs> and I go, well, that's pretty stupid watching myself. <laughs> that's pretty stupid and meanwhile the body's still reacting and you're going through this anger phase and you're just watching it going oh my god <laughs> how stupid is this <laughs> so some of that point of witness state or a bit of that depersonalization where you have that buffer zone is part of the journey so that one can watch the actions and get a handle and see what's taking place. You can't change something if you can't see it. Well, once you see it, then these things can be worked on. It's like I have one student that, that works in the mental health field of uh, also drug, in, independent, drug interactions and stuff with first responders. And what I have them do, and this has worked quite well with her and her clients, is they come in and you do a collage, okay? And you can see the inner workings of where people are stuck. So you do the first collage 
and you go over it, sit with them, and go through it, and you can see what is running the subconscious mind. So the second part of it is this is where you're at. Once they see it, they can physically see it because you're not telling, they're doing this themselves, <laughs> okay? You can show them this is what we have and you discuss it, okay? The second step is, well, this is where you're at now and this is what's running the mind play. Where do you want to be? So you do a second collage and they put on there where they would like to be, what they would like to have in their life that's not there now. So then you go over the second collage with them. And the next step is you're going to bridge that. And this is the important part because people, their first responders and stuff, want to be in control. So the last step is the bridge or the map. I call it the bridge or the map. You've got this big chasm. You're here now. This is fueling the difficulties in life, okay? The subconscious things, and you want to be over here. Okay, well, we need to make the map and the bridge. Now, the last one, you make the collage of what steps do you need to take to get from here to there. And this is their own plan of treatment for themselves. They have to see it. It's not somebody else saying, you need to do this and you need to do that. And you, it doesn't work for somebody that wants to be in control of their life. They have to see the steps. And then once they put that in there, they have their own map on how to move forward. It's in their hands. Your life is your journey and it's in your hands. So this is uh, one thing that I developed and put out there that can be quite valuable to people that are making the journey. And you want to look at the psychology of things that are running behind the scenes, okay? So um, I've had people that have used it and done quite well, okay? Especially with drug treatment programs, that type of stuff, because if you're doing drugs, you're trying to numb yourself from something. You're running away from something. You're not seeing, you're not, you know, there is something that is causing pain that you want to numb yourself from, okay? And again, in order to change it, you have to be able to see it first. So I found and developed this methodology and it works quite well. Because once you create that, you've got a blueprint right there that you can see visually and connect with, okay? And then you can make your bridge, you can make your life plan. These are the steps I need to take in order to get from here to there. Okay, so that's another thing that, that I happen to de have developed um, that can aid people, that can aid them to move forward in their life. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to end this here and uh, <laughs> get back to my juice <laughs> and my egg and my juice and my coffee. <laughs> you know, when I open these up in the morning, I have no idea what's going to come forward. Mm -hmm. But apparently the universe is saying, it's time for this to be spoken about and brought out and stuff. And, you know, people originally come to my channel and they think that all, all, all I'm doing is reading cards, you know, what can you know? Well, they don't know that I did the journey, 30-year journey through Kundalini completed, you know, in 1999. And since then, nothing has changed, okay? It all dismantled and entered a new cycle, a new understanding, a new wisdom, if you will, and then put that out as well as I can to those that are wanting to, to know, wanting to have that established, Okay, so the tarot is my fun time. 
Okay. <laughs> what difference does it make how teachings come forward or spiritual things come forward that can aid people to stop and look or to, to take their mind like the politics? I am so... I, don't really enjoy all the political drama. But if I can aid people into, you know, not getting so caught up and being so, um, where it's ruling their life and making their life miserable, then I'm happy to do that. You know, because this too will pass. These type of happenings in the world, they're, they're transitory. They're not going to be here forever. Okay, uh, so we come here and we are as a um, collective moving through this. You have the collective mind and then you have the individual mind within the collective. Okay, so we, ju we just, uh, you're going through this spectrum. Okay, so uh, anyway, on that note... <laughs> I'm going to leave this and have the rest of my goodies this morning. And then we'll see where the journey takes us. Where are we going next? Okay. But thanks for being the tribe and being here with me. I do so enjoy you all. And I, I, would, I wish that everyone, I wish there was a magic wand I could wave and give you a couple seconds in, into the mindset here, into the consciousness here. And uh, you would find out that it's, um, once one enters that stillness, it doesn't matter what comes and goes, what the outer form is doing, there is always a sense of stillness there, no matter what happens, okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you online.